Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for the finale of Fighter Jet Showdown Season 2. And yes, we are here and we have our eight contenders ready to compete for the ultimate prize of the Fighter Jet Showdown to be the King of Kings. So, what do we have here? Well, we have the six winners of the episodes and two honorable mentions. So, let's go through them and remind ourselves what we have. So we have the X-Ray Lightning. Uh, these are in no particular order, by the way. Um, but yeah, we have the X-Ray Lightning. Um, this came to me from Benjamin and uh, just annihilated everything. Flew completely unconventionally and just, uh, yeah, just annihilated everything that came across it. Next we have the KF-9 Eclipse. This came to me from Quantum Destroyer. And it is just a big flying wing. It is deadly as hell. It is one of the most maneuverable craft we've ever seen. And uh, it laid waste, again, to pretty much everything. Pretty much no planes got any bullets on it. Next, we have the KF-4000 Orkin. This comes to me from El Gusco. And again, yeah, this, I don't think we had such a sweeping victory, but was still an amazing craft and really earned its place here. Next, we have the CF-44 from Andrzej, whose name I will always screw up, but it is a truly amazing craft. And uh, I think it looks really cool. It's quite long, but uh, yeah, again, Pretty fantastic. Um, fifth, we have the Blazar. This came to me from uh, Jimmy. And, uh, and was one of the first really unconventional craft to just blow away everything. Uh, it really surprised me in just how maneuverable it was, considering how kind of unconventional it is. But this season, we've really seen some amazing unconventional craft. There was also the Stealth Interceptor, the KF... No, no, the F-00 Stealth Interceptor. This was for a Maximus Light, and once again, just absolutely earned its place here. It was really incredible, really fast, and actually, I could rarely ever see it as other planes, so maybe it really does have stealth technology. And the two honorable mentions, of course, the A-Wing, which came to me from Pontus, and was unbelievably maneuverable and high-performing for how it looks, because it... Because to look like an A-Wing is quite difficult, and also have it maneuverable was just an, uh, an incredibly impressive achievement to um, make something look like this, but fly the way it does. And pretty much the first craft in Season 2 uh, will be our final honorable mention. This is the uh, Sukhoi T-50 Pack fa which came to me from Robbie, and was just... It looks beautiful and flew really well. It really does look right and fly right. But anyway, enough looking at the planes. Let's get in to the competition. Alright, so the first round will be between the KF-9 Eclipses and the A-Wings. Let's get them into the air. Now, the A-Wings, of course, are honorable mentions. They did not win their way here. They got the here by being truly impressive, and I believe they actually do have a shot at winning. They have a lot to prove. Was it just a fluke? Or that they lost, or were they, uh, and will they be able to come back, and will they be better than other craft? Maybe um, they were better than some of the other winners, but just not the one they fought. Who knows? Let's see. So they're all taken off now. These guys, of course, only carry two Amrams, whereas these guys carry more missiles, four Amrams and two Sidewinders. Um, highly maneuverable on both sides. Who knows uh, who will win, but uh, I'm excited to find out. I do like doing the finales, although I've only ever done one. But it's just <laughs> rather fun to see the best of the best fight each other. Uh, maybe I should do six seasons of this and get the best of the best of the best. And just, uh, that would be amazing. It would be a very long con, but uh, <laughs> I think it would be quite fantastic. Alright, we've got missiles away now. Hopefully there will be no missile kills. That would be depressing. But of course, people often ask me, why don't you just uh, not, not put missiles on craft? But uh, I think that, although it's boring... Oh, we're getting all this lag. That's annoying. Um, anyway, although it would be boring um, to, uh, to, 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 it's boring to see craft killed by missiles. It's a really important skill to be able to uh, not get killed by missiles, I think, for any kind of craft. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> we're getting this lag again. It had been fixed for the past two couple episodes because I'm using Physics Range Extender, but apparently today not so much. I apologize for that, but there appears to be nothing I can do about these things. I think one of these probably just has too many flares on it. Um, and oh my god, one of the KF-9s get ta gets taken down by an AMRAM. That is rather incredible. Um, clearly, uh, these aren't so good at dodging missiles. That's the problem, of course, with having a flying wing. It's just massive. It's hard to dodge out of the way. And now there's guns coming to it. Will the KF-9 be taken out? Okay, the A-Wing flies over now. It is truly dogfight mode. This guy actually just mostly evading. I mean, he can do that. He's ridiculously maneuverable, but he ha does have these giant wings. 
You know, he could be shot down quite easily, and he's taking fire and trying to line up a shot. This may be a bad move, but he's putting fire down on the A-wing, but then takes some shots, loses some of his wings, keeps flying, but then is eviscerated by the A-wing behind him. Well, truly, uh, these A-wings did deserve their place in the final, um, and maybe we were called too soon in the, uh, in the initial... Uh, who the hell are you shooting now? Dude, he's already dead. But yeah, okay, that's that's interesting. All right. Well, good job, Pontus. Let's uh, move on to the next round to see who will be facing the A-Wing in the semifinals. All right, so round two will be, of course, the Blazars versus the CFA-44s. Uh, both fantastic craft. Uh, when it gets to, like, these, like, you know, finales, I have no idea who's going to win. Um, he's both take off almost instantly, that's impressive. Because I haven't seen them just fight, I don't actually have a great idea of who's going to be able to do what. I do love these guys in air intakes though, um, on the CFA-44s, they're really cool. It's a really nice idea of kind of combining two to make an interesting looking thing. Alright, almost had a bit of a collision, just, you know, tactical bro fist. Um, that actually did happen at one of these, it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, the CFA-40, no, the Blazars are getting up to, uh, well, both getting away from each other now to 8 kilometers. We'll turn around. I think they're fairly evenly missiled, two Amrams, four Sidewinders, and, ooh, just four Amrams. This guy is going for it, and also has an ECM jammer. I don't really know what that does. Maybe it makes him less easy to kill. Um, could be. Could be. I don't really know. Do I have to turn that on? Well, I'm not gonna, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, if it gives you an advantage that I don't know about, I should probably leave it off, right? Um, for, if I do Season 3, I might loosen the rules a bit and just have some more defined rules so I don't have to, like, edit people's craft, because I think people do, uh, get a little upset about that. It's like, yo, I designed this thing, and, you know, you took fuel out of it. Yo, CFA-44, what's happening? Ooh, chased into the ground by missiles. Legitimate kill. I always find that to be a legitimate kill. As I've said many times, you know, start of Desert Storm. First MiG that was taken down was chased into the ground by a, uh... Actually an unarmed plane, because American pilots are just so good that uh, it was uh, like a radar jamming unarmed plane. Just fucking killed a, like a MiG-29 or oh, maybe an SU-27 uh, SU because, you know, the Iraqi pilots just weren't as good. Anyway, talking of not as good, the Blazars make very short work of the CFA-44s, which I'm a little happy about because I still can't pronounce the uh, creator of the CFA-44s name. So now I'll never have to do it again. <laughs> but uh, good job, Andrzej, they were good. But yeah, the Blazars will be going up against the A-Wings in the semi-final. And that was quite a walkover, I have to say. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, the next rounds will be a little more intense. But let's move on to the third round of the uh, qualifier. All right, so the third round will be between the KF-4000s and the X-Ray Lightnings. Let's get them into the air and see who shall win. Now, the X-Ray Lightnings, of course, are pretty infamous. You know, they, they use height to their advantage. They're just quite skilled. They fly in such a weird way that they're very hard to hit. And honestly... No offense to everyone else, but I kind of have a feeling that these guys might win. Now, it's impossible to predict these kind of things because, you know, there's so many good craft here and so many different things can happen. But if I had, if I were a betting man, I'd probably put it on the uh, X-ray linings. But of course, the KF-4000s have, uh, you know, have made, are made of sterner stuff. Uh, they, they're made by, I think, the winner of the whole of last, last competition. No, no, they weren't. But they were the winner of someone who got into the final blast competition. So these are these have some pedigree behind them, is what I'm saying. And they get missiles away first. They turn very smoothly. The X-ray lightnings turn fast, but because of their weird control surfaces, they turn kind of jankily. You can see these guys have already gained a lot of altitude, and they're using that to their advantage, meaning they don't have to go so close to the ground to dodge missiles, which means they're less likely to be killed by being run into the ground by missiles, um, which is you know a cause of death for a lot of planes in this competition, actually. Um, but now the uh, KF-4000s are on the offensive, they're coming towards the X-rays who are still turning, putting away more missiles. The X-rays actually, oof, I don't know man, they're kind of, uh, might be dire straits. You can see they turn so weirdly though, I think with, uh, even without flares, missiles would have a hard time getting anywhere near them. But the KF-4000s are coming in now, they're putting fire, one of the X-rays goes down. Oh my god, the greatest upset in the history of sport. The other uh, X-ray lightning almost instantly goes down. I thought I'd given the competition to these guys, but I had us underestimated the KF-4000s. It's been a while since I've seen them fight, but they really... I didn't even see the second one go down, they were taken down so quickly. They're just so... they fly so well that even though the X-Ray Lightnings are probably more maneuverable, these guys just had the control to eviscerate them so quickly. That is incredible. I, uh... 
Didn't see that coming, actually. And uh, it's nice to be surprised. But that is another walkover, actually, you know? I mean, we are, we're having a lot of very one-sided competitions, but usually the semi-finals are a little more exciting. But anyway, let's move on to the last round of the qualifier and see who will go up against these KF4000s. All right, so the final round of the qualifiers will be to, between the F-000 Stealth Fighters and the Sukhoi T-50 Pack FAs. Now, the Sukhois, of course, are... Uh are uh, um, the honorable mentions from the first episode. They did very well, but will they do well against the Stealth Interceptor? We know these to be pretty deadly. They, uh, they uh, you know, often come out of nowhere, somewhat stealthily. <laughs> of course, Stealth is actually hiding from radar, not hiding from, uh, you know, visuals. Although that'd be cool, like an actual invisible jet. You know, why don't we have that? That would make you, that, uh, get on invisibility, guys, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't made out of screens with a bunch of cameras. That's actually not the worst idea. I'm gonna... Okay, I've got to go to the US military and be like, Hey, I've got a great idea. And they'll be like, wow, that is a great idea. We never thought of that. And I'll be like, yeah. Um, no, that's really probably the worst idea. Imagine, um, yeah, screens probably aren't super bulletproof either. Um, but you can't shoot what you can't see. Anyway, missiles going away. These guys are a little squirrely. These guys, uh, diving low, diving low. Hopefully no missile kills, as you know they are boring, but an important skill for, uh, for a fighter jet. Something exploded, I think it was just a missile. Oh my god, things, things are happening. Things are happening. There's a missile chasing down that guy, but all is good. Uh, how's the other stealth interceptor doing? It's good, it's gone high. They've got the, uh, the, uh, pack FA's going low. This guy's already tried to shoot the, uh, the, uh, Sukhoi, but missed, and uh, had to pull out. Uh, and is now in a flat spin. Hmm. Will he rescue himself from the flat spin, or will he be shot? Will the honorable mentions have some kind of crazy comeback? And they do! They rip apart one of the stealth interceptors, and there's actually... Oh, I thought there was a Sukhoi on this guy's tail. This guy's... Oh, no, this guy's lighting up the, uh... The Sukhoi, and it looks like it might be one-on-one -on -one if this guy can actually put some shots on target, but he's having trouble. But he does just clip the wing off the Sukhoi in a beautiful fashion. That was a beautiful kill. Where's his wingman? Coming in, opening fire now. It looks like it... <laughs> oh, that was amazing! He like, tried to pause in the air to kill him. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. The, uh... Ooh, ooh, Sukhoi coming in looking rather beautiful. Um, now this is a good fight. Alright, this guy's going a little low, though. you got to pull out. He's Picture authority isn't amazing, seems like. Alright, but this guy's got gunfire coming in now, and none of the bullets hit, and oh, none of the bullets hit again, and oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah, we're on, we, this guy's on the defensive now, though. He's pulling some pretty nice maneuvers, but eventually he's just gonna run out of speed. He loses an engine, but it gets away, and the Sukhoi flies past, trying to break with his air brake to try and shoot him down, but this guy is still alive, and is not giving up that easily. And he's actually getting behind him now. How's the Sukhoi doing? Turning around, coming in for the final kill, maybe unless... Oh no, that guy just doesn't have enough energy to point vertically. This guy's fucked now. It is all for the Sukhoi, and he takes the kill. Wow, really impressive. I actually was questioning whether uh, these would uh, do very well against the um, F-00s, because I knew those were fantastic as well. But I have to say, the honorable mentions are having a pretty great day today. Um, there are two honorable mentions in the semi-final. Will they go further? Did they uh, lose for no reason before? Anyway, let's move on and see the semi-finals now. Alright, so the first round of the semi-finals is of course the A-Wings versus the Blazars. Who will win? Nobody knows. Let's find out. Um, yeah, Blazars take off almost instantly because they kind of rock back. Um, but yeah, the A-Wings will also be in the air in no time. The Honorable Mentions truly coming back, doing rather wonderfully, and I do love these because they're just so... As I said, how the hell do you make something look like this and fly so well? It's really impressive. You can see the internals as well, it's not like just filled with wings. I think there is an extra wing in there, but it's not like really abusive of KSP physics. It's, it's an engineering marvel, I, I have to commend you Pontus, this is really fantastic. Um, and I'm really glad that it's actually gotten here. The Blazars, of course, just, they're, they're, they're just raw performance. They look weird, they're triplanes, they have, you know, two canards. It, it is just, it, it was like, how do we kill people? Who cares how it looks? I quite like how it looks, by the way, but, uh, you know, it's not, you know, beautiful like one of the Sukhois. But it really is quite the killing machine. Alright, missiles away. The uh, Everyone's starting to dodge now. Hopefully they'll have no trouble with any of this. I doubt they will. Um, because they're just so 
Yeah, these guys of course though only have two missiles, which is a little bit of a disadvantage. As the other A-Wing, doing rather well, I believe. Uh, more missiles going away. Blazars, yeah, they're coming back now. You've got a kind of, one of the really, uh, one of the things that missiles do test is how quickly they can recover from turns. Because, you know, they've got to dodge the missiles and then get back into the fight so you can get guns to them first. So it is really important. This guy tries to shoot down a missile, easily distracted, that's really on him. Um, and now they're split apart. It looks like it's A-Wings versus, uh, versus one of these, unless that guy can catch up. This guy is loaded quite well with missiles, so he could probably keep his distance for a while and maybe get some kills, or at least scare the A-Wings a little. But it doesn't look like they're scared at all. They're on the offensive now. The final of their, the last of their missiles goes in and doesn't get a kill. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, now it's gun time. Blazars have guns to them um, because they are maneuverable. This guy gets shot down, but the A-Wing... Looks as if he's trying to shred the guy who just shredded his wingmate, as so often happens, kills are consecutive because someone is chasing someone and someone is chasing that guy. But oh hell no, the, bla the other Blazar has already pulled this guy off, takes the kill, explodes the A-Wing, and the Blazars are victorious. Well, it looks like the Honorable Mention is out of the competition, and the Blazar will be going to the finale to compete for the, uh, for the ultimate prize. You know, it's better than an Oscar. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but who will they be going up against? Let's find out. Alright, so the last round of the semi-finals, of course, the uh, Sukhoi T-50s versus the KF-4000s. Um, both craft I actually didn't think would be here. Uh, the KF-4000, for some reason I thought the X-Ray Lightning would do it, but I had just forgotten how amazing these were, because they were in an earlier episode. Same with the T-50. I kind of thought the, uh, the F-00 the F would take it, but no. No, no, no. I am uh, routinely mistaken. Um, so yes, these are going to go ahead into position and fight it out to see who will have the dubious honor of going up against the Blazars in the, uh, in the finale, in the final of the finale. The finale final, exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, alright. So we're getting to starting position now. I actually just noticed these guys have cool little looking intakes down here. I think they're like, yeah, it's like wings around the intakes. That's cool! I didn't notice that before. That's really nice. Anyway, go murder each other. Uh, <laughs> you got nice intakes, but really what I want to see is you kill some people. Do these guys even have... Oh, they do have AMRAMs. Okay. Um, these guys have significantly more missiles. Um, actually, they only have two AMRAMs. Okay, no, these have the same amount of missiles, actually, surprisingly. Um, and the AMRAMs will surely split up packs, and it looks like the packs is in the packs of fighters, not as in the packs as the Sukhoi's. You know what I mean. Anyway, the missiles fly past, doing no damage. It looks like the KF-4000s are uh, having no trouble, already firing missiles again. They just have... Just ultimate control. I think it's to do with the front canards making it easier for them to control at high speeds. You know, that's why the, um, ooh, one of the reasons why uh, the Eurofighter can perform its whole mission at supersonic because it has big delta wings and it has front canards, so it can do all of its turns at supersonic, so it doesn't need to be stealth because it's just so fast. Interesting uh, Eurofighter fact. Um, okay, this guy popping flares, missile is coming in, but ooh, now guns are coming in. Some fire is going on over there. The KF 4000 scores a kill. Um, Holy hell, it, I, I, I couldn't figure out what to click on, sorry, but yeah, it scores itself a gun kill, but now the, uh, now the Sukhoi is coming in and strips off the wing. This guy surely won't be able to fight anymore. Now it's basically one on one and a half. This guy can't get the turn. As, again, their off to, kills are very frequently followed up quickly. This guy now making sure that this guy can't get like a sneaky missile kill away, but there is the other plane coming in. It's making sure that he can't finish off the, the uh, wingman, but he'll no doubt hit the ground in seconds. Now it's one on one. Truly a fight for the ages. The rounds come in. He does a roll to try and get out of the way, but is just ripped apart. And uh, we'll try and go skyward, but we'll no doubt be shredded. And there he goes. The KF-4000s taking it. Look at that. That was beautiful. I really like these, actually. Um, they're doing a fantastic job, and they will be going to the finale. Uh, to the final. We are already in the finale. They'll be going to the final to face off against the Blazars, to see who is the King of Kings of Season 2. So, let's go there now. So, yes, the final of the finale. The Blazars versus the KF-4000s. Now again, the Blazars came to me from Jimmy, the KF-4000s from Augusto, and uh, they will now face off to see who is the ultimate fighting champion. Yes, uh, <laughs> I'm actually quite excited to see who will win. 
They're both so amazing. Not the one, actually I did kind of think the Blazars were going to be here. I remember them being quite amazing and a lot of people raving about them in the comments. Because I think these may have been the first winners. They just kind of slipped from my memory. That often happens. That happened in Season 1. Um, but the Season 2 fighters have been truly impressive. Many are very original designs. And if you're interested in, you know, doing more of this and you're not already part of my Discord, you should go over to my Discord because there's a whole Fighter Jet Showdown page where people just, like, share fighters and, you know, test fighters against each other. It's almost like an underground street fight of Fighter Jet Showdown. You know, that's, that's exactly what it is. So go over there. It's the link in the description um, if you're interested. You know, there's a lot of craft that are really amazing coming out of there now. Anyway... All right, missile time. It would be quite depressing if everyone was killed by missiles now, but I kind of doubt it will happen because these are two rather excellent craft, um, of course. The Blazars, ridiculously maneuverable. Same with the KF-4000s, but these almost seem like energy fighters, even though it's mostly to do with their control. Just the way they do things is so kind of sleek and smooth. This guy's going a little low, though. Little low. Little low, buddy. Little low, buddy. Pull out. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, wow, makes waves dodging that missile. <laughs> oh, that would have been, that would have sucked if it crashed. You too, buddy, don't fuck with me, man. <laughs> Alright, looks like missiles are just a mess of people just fucking with them by like, Oh, I'm gonna make waves and shit. You know, that was totally planned. This guy was just fucking with them. Alright, he's going in supersonic now, lining up his shots. Fuck you, fire engine. And then, oh, diving out as he gets chased away by the shots from the uh, Blazar. And he's going low. Has he been actually forced into a crash this time? And oh my god, he has. Oh, now it's one KF-4000 versus the Blazar. But this guy's putting in shots, as seems to always happen. Consecutive kills. He explodes. And then the next Blazar's coming in and lights up the KF-4000. And the Blazar is the winner of Season 2. Well, that all happened in uh, <laughs> a few seconds. <laughs> I can't even breathe, well, yeah, the Blazars, I kind of, you know, they were one of the ones I had in the back of my head, you know, definitely, I don't think they were my first choice, but they really did uh, take it, just eviscerated them in quite a close fight, that was quite amazing, so, congratulations to Jimmy for getting the Blazars to the final, for creating the ultimate fighter now, I can't really remember. Is this the same Jimmy who runs my Discord? Because he's currently trying to work on the Ultimate Fighter. But if it is the same Jimmy, then uh, you already did it. Um, and if it's not, then congratulations. And, you know, comment down below so I get an idea of who you are. Because I've kind of forgotten because this has been a while ago. But, um, yeah, that's Season 2 done. Now, last time I said I'd upload all the craft, and I didn't because I was away um, and wasn't at my computer. I will try and do that this time. I'll put them on a media fire or something. And you can just look through all the craft from Season 1 and 2. And it'll be rather fantastic, because everyone keeps asking, and I never do it. And uh, yeah, so yes, this is the end of Season 2. What will happen to Fighter Jet Showdown now? Well, uh, Season 3 will come at some point, uh, but it might be a month or two between this one and next, because I like to give it a little time, give some people time to work, you know, make, make, make good stuff, and also give myself a little break from series. I like change. Um, yeah, but there will be a World War II fighter showdown. There's going to be two episodes. Um, there's going to be a fighter jet showdown with World War II fighters like the Gloucester Meteor or the ME-163? 162? Something like that. ME-263? There's, there's, there's a lot of them. They also don't have to be based on anything as long as they're just kind of along the same kind of lines as uh, World War II things. So nothing with afterburners, you know, mostly Juno engines, that kind of thing. So if you send me craft for that, um, we're going to do that. And then also a propeller one where they use propellers. So, you know, you've got your Spitfires and your um, BF-109s and your, your, you know, P-51 Mustangs, if I'm getting all the numbers right. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll probably put together some basic rules in a thing down below. Basically, just don't go too crazy. Um, not really rules, more guidelines. And also mods you'll need. I'll link a few of them. Um, a good one is Aviator Arsenal for their, those kind of guns. And... Uh, and um, Airplane Plus is good for the uh, good for propellers. So yeah, I'll put some information down below about that. Um, so yeah, uh, that'll be more just kind of fun. There won't be like I w you know this this has gotten a little serious between some people. You know yeah, they you know with and I've implemented a few rules, but the World War Two ones are just going to be just a little fun. You know, don't take it too serious. Um, so send me your stuff for that. They'll, those will just be two one-off episodes, and it'll be a lot of fun. As I said, guidelines are in the description, along with the Discord where you can talk to other people who are working on these kind of things and just watch other series I do, and it's a lot of fun. So yeah. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this whole series. I know I have. I'm glad we have found the answer to who is the best fighter. And it is, of course, the Blazar. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been uh, Chaos Move Tape. I will see you next time.